Hey everybody, good to see you, it's time to get up in the air again. Let me uh, kill this music, it's wonderful, we all love it and everything, but listen, I got something new to show you today. We are trying a brand new, um, trying a brand new piece of hardware. It is called the Octavi IFR1, and let me show it to you. Here it is, it's about this big, you can see. And it's meant to replicate or make available the functions in the G1000 type uh, PFDs and MFDs, as well as some of the other Garmin uh, units, some of the smaller ones and the less advanced ones. Um, if you were with me in my last flight, you saw that disastrous loss of control that I had that uh, came when I tried to use keyboard input to uh, pop in my flight plan while I was already in the air. Now. Um, despite the boneheaded maneuver of not having my flight plan ready, it was also really a pain in the butt to try to manipulate the G1000 controls. Is maybe the worst part of, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator is, is having to do that with a mouse. So this little device can do that and quite a bit more, actually. Um, if you take a look real quick here at the standard functions cheat sheet, and maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. I don't know. Uh, but you can see it's got... COM1, COM2 controls, NAV1, and NAV2 controls, and then an FMS1 and FMS2 control, which is the um, PFD, that's going to be the left-hand side of your G1000, and the MFD, which is going to be the right-hand side of your G1000. And this lovely little spinner knob right here, it's got the fine, the course control, and a little clicker, is kind of the magic that makes that all work. Along the bottom row, it's got options for activating your autopilot modes, autopilot master, heading mode, nav mode, approach mode, alt hold mode, vertical speed mode, and you can see these blue items here, what these are are alternate modes that are activated when you click in the stick here. Now you know that if you use the FMS, clicking the stick actually does something in the PFD and MFD. Well the click does that in M uh, F MFS1 and FMS2 modes. You see there's no blue text above here. But in any other mode, when you press that mode and click this stick, you enter the secondary mode. In this case it would be the heading change mode. In COM2 that would be the barrow change mode. It's a good way to get some extra functionality. My only complaint is that when you activate the secondary mode, you don't know that you've done that. There's no visual representation that you've done that. Here's your direct to, menu, clear, and enter, which are very uh, important in the G1000's operation. And then there are additional mode changes that you can get down here. So this is changes your CDI. You can change from magenta needles to green needles. This sets up your OBS mode. This allows you to access your messages on your PFD, the flight plan mode, VNAV mode, and procedures mode. I think we will use all of these today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and head out to Remerton in our usual... Oh, heh, yeah, I was looking at uh, pretzel uh, music, and I was thinking about getting a subscription, and now I'm not anymore. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing today. We're going to fly from Boeing Field. Conditions you can see here aren't fantastic. It's marginal VFR, scattered 10, broken 20, 14, temperature 13, dew point. It's actually getting warmer out here today. Uh, pressure's fairly high, 3014, which is probably going to keep that dew point pretty close to the temperature um, today and not allow things to uh, raise up too much higher. I have seen some blue sky out there driving out there today, so it's possible. Down south, you can see it's a lot better. Tacoma Narrows has got few clouds, but up north, it's uh, not quite as good. We're going to fly to Bremerton. That's got uh, 10 statute miles scattered at 5 and overcast at 14. 12, 12. You can see that the temperature and the dew point are really close together, so we're going to have precipitation, or at least uh, clouds pretty close to the ground. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, we want to do we want to do some practice on we want to do some practice on our uh, approaches, and uh, I think I, I think what we should do is we should try the ILS Loke Runway 20 first. So we'll go to Wumox and do the ILS Loke 20. That'll be a straight in. We'll go mist and we'll shoot for Cara, which is our mist point. Then we'll do the RNAV 02 because it's close to Cara, we'll come back and we'll make that a circling approach. Okay, so we're going to circle, and we're going to circle. It's going to be a, I think it's left pattern, but let's figure that out. For runway, uh, for runway 20, we'll go to the world VFR, 
And it says right pattern runway two, so it's left pattern for two zero. So we're gonna deflect to the left and we'll enter we're gonna deflect to the right and we'll enter left pattern for two zero and we'll go missed again. And then we'll come home to Boeing Field, so that's the plan. Oh look, Bremerton just went uh, VFR. Great. Let's go ahead and enter our flight plan. All right, IFR six three seven eight Mike C one seventy two G one fifteen KVFI KPWT. Um, we'll go ahead and ask for. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look real quick and take a look at what freezing levels are today. They're way up there. They're probably somewhere around seven thousand feet. So we'll ask for uh, we'll ask for four thousand, um, and we'll just. Uh, We'll do route of flight uh, direct. It's close enough that it shouldn't be too bad. All right. We're filed. Let's go ahead and connect up. Pilot edge connected. All right. Let's get over to the game. Oops. That wasn't good. All right. How are we looking? Everybody looking good? All right, you can see I've got my Octavi down here in the center. I know that that's going to make it hard to see the uh, PFD. Um, what I can do is I'll go ahead and fly mostly in instrument mode and try to get the PFD lined up right here, and then we'll pop the tablet on and off so you can see the MFD, and that's uh, kind of how it's going to be today. It's uh, it's a little bit of uh, making do with what we've, with what we've got uh, since there's only so much screen real estate we can use, but I think I think this might work. I'd like you to see the uh, Octavia in action, so let me go ahead and uh, get the aircraft started up. Alrighty. Go to performance mode here. Alright, things are looking good. Plenty of fuel on board. We'll go ahead and make sure our beacon is, is lit and ready to go. We're going to go ahead and make sure our mixture is uh, full lean. Fuel pump, one, two, three, and fuel pump off. Alright, we're primed, ready to go. Make sure we're standing on those brakes. A little bit of throttle, mixture full lean. Clear prop! And push full rich. There we go. Make sure we're getting about a thousand RPM. Disengage the starter. Nav lights are on. Avionics on. And I'll turn that tablet off. You don't need to see that for just a moment. All right. Now I can press Enter or right soft key to continue. So I guess you know what. Well, why don't we try FMS2 Enter? Ah, nope. I guess that didn't work. Well, let's make sure that the this this thing works at all. At the moment it doesn't seem to want to. Let's change, let's try COM1. Nope. Nope, it's not happy about this. Oh, that's because I'm not I didn't hit run on my mobile flight connector. Now I've hit run and now it should be working. Let's see. Sure is. All right, good. Um, and so I've got it in FMS2 mode, which controls my MFD. The course knob gives me each of these pages. I'll go ahead and move it to the map and let it sit there for just a second. And uh, let's go ahead and go FMS1. And let's see, what can we do in FMS1? We can change the CDI. We can set the transponder. That's cool. Let's see if the transponder setting works. It does not look like it does because it is off. Let's turn it on. It does not want to turn on. For reasons I cannot possibly fathom. What is going on here? Let me let me change transponder mode real quick. What's well, absolutely fascinating is there some kind of failure in the aircraft? I have never seen transponder off. I have never seen that. Avionics are on. Beacon is on. Hit our pedo heat there. Trying to set VFR. That's not working. 
Let me disconnect. Go ahead and stop the mobile flight connector really quick and see if... Wow. That is absolutely wacky and wild, and I cannot even fathom why that has happened. So let me check our general options. Or no, where are our failures? I wonder if there was stress damage. Well, I find that genuinely weird and I think we better start over. Oh, guys and gals, I have no idea why that uh, why that happened. Uh, Pilot edge disconnected. We're gonna try again and get our transponder working. Without a transponder working, uh, we aren't going anywhere. That's just absolutely a must-have. So, set for departure. Weight and balance, 80, failures. Cylinder, fire, oil system, enable failure, off, 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 and off. And this is the G1000, and customization, and... One more time. We'll reset everything. Lights and all that are off. One more time. And if we don't get the transponder, then I'll go ahead and just fly. I'll just go ahead and fly without Pilot Edge, and uh, we'll, we'll still do our approaches. And I'll go debug this later, but one way or the other, we're getting up into the air today. So thanks for hanging with me. Never seen a uh, transponder failure quite like that. All right, we'll go ahead and get going here. I'm going to have to do some kind of song and dance here for you. All right, we're back. All right, let's go ahead and get set up the way we like here. We're going to go ahead and make it so you can see that the, uh, the PFD. So, all right, let's go battery on. Okay, transponder showing 1200 standby. That's exactly what we would want. Go ahead and uh, go mixture full lean, fuel pump on. And rich, one, two, three, and lean, fill pump off. We're primed, make sure that we're all set. Throttle forward, quarter of an inch. Mix your full lean, clear prop. Clear prop. There you go, that's looking good. Get some good RPMs, starter is disengaged, avionics on. All right, we're going one more time. You can see transponder there shows 1200 standby, so at least that is not a problem anymore. Let's go ahead and look over here. Got to make that yoke go away. All right, we're all set, and the system is coming online. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure... Okay, I'm using my Octavia here. You can see that's working pretty well, so let's go ahead and tune 12775. That's going to be Boeing, uh, Boeing weather. I like that, and uh, just a second here, I'm going to connect to Pilot Edge. 
Pilot Edge connected. Okay, Pilot Edge is connected. And actually, I want to use COM2. Um, so I'm starting to get used to monitoring things is on COM2. Things you listen to are on COM2. And we'll press the switch button and turn on COM2. Hello. And 140 at 4. There you go. Visibility 10. 1000 scattered. Ceiling 2000 broken. Temperature 14. Dew point 13. Altimeter 3014. Arriving and departing runways 14 left, 14 right. ILS runway 14 right approach in use. Simultaneous approaches between Boeing Field and Seattle International. Expect aircraft above you on final. Read back all runway assignments and hold your instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information, Juliet. Juliet, and we're going to listen for the wind, and then we'll be Boeing going King County this. Airport. Eight is information, Juliet. One seven five three Zulu. Wind one four zero at four. four Visibility four. one zero. One thousand scattered. All Ceiling right. two thousand broken. Temperature four. Point one three. I'm turning down the, uh, I'm turning down the, the volume four. just a little bit. Arriving I know that I heard, runways, one I heard some folks were saying right. it was a little bit loud, ILS and runway, I agree with you. Right approach and use. Simultaneous approaches between Boeing Field and Seattle National. Expect aircraft there we go. Above you 35 on is final. Good. Let me go ahead and turn off that comm. All right, so we've got the weather, and we know the Barrow setting, so we're going to go ahead it's COM2, Barrow is the secondary. We're going to click the stick like that, and we're going to spin it. Three, zero, one, four. Nice. That worked pretty well. Now, if you use the Barrow here, it actually sets it to standby. Interestingly enough, it doesn't do that in the Octavia, so you actually have to go and set this yourself. So that's one where you... I guess I'm not as thrilled about that, but oh well. There you go. Okay, we're set for the field. That looks pretty good. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to call for Boeing clearance delivery. It's 132.4, so we go back to COM1. 132.4. All right, cool. And let's go ahead and call, and we'll get our scratch pla uh, pad up so we can copy our clearance to KPWT. KPWT. Boeing clearance, good day. Skyhawk 6378 Mike on the ground at Boeing looking to pick up our IFR to Bremerton. November 6378 Mike, Boeing clearance clear to the Bremerton Airport, Nirvana 1 departure, radar vectors 1X direct. Climb via SID, departure frequency 120.4, squawk 3172. Clear to the Bremerton Airport, Nirvana 1 departure, radar vectors Wumox, direct, climb via the SID, frequency 1, 2, 0 0.4, squawk 3, 1, 7, 2, 7, 8, Mike. November 6, 3, 7, 8, Mike, feedback, correct. Sweet. All right. Um, so one thing, I'm going to go ahead and hit X transponder, and we're going to see if we can set it. It looks like we can. That's cool. Seattle Center, Skyhawk 96792, on the ground at Kelso... IFR to Seattle. Three, one. Number nine six seven nine two Seattle Center Crew to Seattle wow, Airport as files maintain six thousand departure frequency one two six point six squawk five seven zero five and hold seven, release. Two. I don't know if I like that. Clear to the uh, Seattle Airport and as filed. Climb mode. maintain six thousand contact one two six point six squawk five. And we know we got one two zero point four. Skyhawk nine six seven nine two. We're not going to use that just yet. Nine six seven nine two. Departure frequency one two. Or sorry, the squawk five seven zero five. Rest of readback correct. Advise number one for departure. Change to advisory frequency is approved. All right, we're on one two point nine. Squawk is five seven zero five. One two zero six. That's the tower. And we are number one for departure. All right, cool. November 96792, release for departure, clearance is void, if not off in five minutes. If not off in five minutes, let's go ahead and set our Seattle Center of Intentions to later than one zero minutes from round time, one eight four nine Zulu, change to advisory frequency approved. Mox, KPWT. Okay, clear, uh, release for departure, departure, if not off in five, contact within ten. Um, All right, change there we to go. advisory approved, 792. All right. 
And it's inclined to be the SID, so why don't we go uh, KBFI, Departures, we'll look at the Nirvana one. That's the Cobain one, that's not the right one. We'll look at the Nirvana one. There we go. Okay, so top altitude's 2,000. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go down to AP, and the outer ring sets your altitude bug. So we're going to go ahead and spin that and set it for 2,000. That's the top altitude, very cool. And then we're going to, uh, let's see, and then the inner is the vertical speed which we're not using yet. Now I'm going to hit COM1, I'm going to click, and now we're in heading mode. Now I can change the heading bug, and we want to be uh, 135. Alright, now you see it only goes in increments of 10, which isn't great. Um, I'd like a little more granularity than that. That's unfortunate, but that's okay. Okay, so we've got barrow set, we've got initial heading set, we've got the altitude set, we're ready for that part. I'm going to go ahead and set the plates for KPWT here and approach. We're doing the ILS Roke, uh, ILS Loke 20. We'll start from Wumox. Okay, here's the next thing we're going to do. I'm going to hit FMS uh, 1 and I'm going to click this. No, I'm going to hit flight plan. There you go. Okay. And spin this guy. K. B. F. This is how you do it in the real plane too. It's and then enter. That's that's easy. I like that. That's real nice. Okay, and then we know we're going to Wumox. So let's go ahead and spin. And yes, you can use the keyboard, but I'm trying out the trying out the Octavi today. Wumox, yeah. All right, and then the destination is K P W T Bremerton National. We don't know what runway, and there you go. We don't care. And then what we're going to do is we're going to press this proc button. Perfect. We're going to select our departure. Enter. We'll select the Nirvana one. Load. Awesome. Okay, and make sure that that fits with our plates. Make sure that that's right. Climb heading 135 to 700 feet. Yep, then direct Nirvana. Yep, then on track 135 for radar vectors. Cool, that part's good. Then comes Wumox, then comes KPWT, and we'll, we'll pop in the procedure. As a matter of fact, I'll pop it in right now because we know what procedure we actually want. So we'll select Approach, Enter. And we want the ILS-20 starting at Wumox. Enter. All right, we'll set the minimums. Let's go to our plate. Um, the ILS is 642, so uh, we'll set it to 650. There we go. And load. Yep, we know GPS guidance is not approved. Okay, there's Wumox. And then let's make sure this fits. We have Wumox IAF, then a procedure turn, Quifum, which is a computer navigation point, back to Wumox, the final approach fix, yep, and then runway 20 is the missed approach point. If we have to go missed, we climb 4000 on 196 to an intercept point, heading 107, an intercept point on the Ol OLM Vortac R346, and then hold a caro. Okay, that all looks correct. We'll leave flight plan up here. We know what we're doing. All right, that's awesome, and we're ready on COM1 to tell ground that we're ready to taxi. Fun stuff, right? Let me go ahead and uh, turn the tablet off so you can see a little bit better. We'll kind of pop our head up so we can look around. And how's everybody doing out there? Doing pretty good? All right, let's go ahead and get going. Boeing Ground Skyhawk number 6378, Mike with information, Juliet at Galvin, ready for taxi, IFR. November 6378 Mike, Boeing Ground, runway 14 right, taxi via Alpha. 14 right, taxi via Alpha, 78 Mike. All right, get our plates out, check out the airport here. Tablet, you can see we're we're here, a little spinning airplane. 14 right is just uh, going to be off to our right as we move. So let me get my taxi lights up. I'll turn that tablet off again so you don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to lean out a little bit. Pedo heat is on. And uh, make sure our parking brake is off. All right, yeah. November 96792, 
November 96792, radar contact, 30 miles northwest of the Metal Ground VR, afternoon. Alright, and uh, just for the sake of time, we're not going to be doing a full run-up here. I'm going to be doing some check-ride prep later on in a couple of weeks as I as I get ready, and we'll do some checklist work. We'll make sure we're doing it exactly the right way, but we're using the uh, we're trying out the Octavia one today. That's going to be our number one priority today, so we'll just kind of keep going and and get there. Okay, as we come up, we're going to hold short runway 14 right. We're going to call tower 120.6, let them know we're ready Approaching for departure. Approaching runway 14 right. And before we do that, let's go ahead and push our RPM up a little bit. Idle. We're going to go ahead and switch frequencies here. We're going to switch frequencies, press the button, switch frequencies to 120.6, and then I'm going to dial 120.4 because that's going to be departure. We remember that, right? Now, also, what are we monitoring? Well, we need to monitor guard. That's important. 121.5. So I'm going to go ahead and plug 121.5 in, switch that, and then the next thing that we should monitor is Bremerton's weather, right? 121.2. So we'll plug that in. There you go. Now we're ready. Comms are ready to go. Alright, let me go ahead and call tower. Boeing Tower, Skyhawk November 6378, Mike, 14 right at Alpha 1, ready for departure, IFR. November 6378 Mike, Boeing Tower, runway 14 right, clear for takeoff. 14 right, clear for takeoff, 78 Mike. Awesome, lights, lands and strobe lights on. Camera, we're squawking 3172. Action, mixture full rich, let's take that runway. Looking to our right, no traffic coming in. Looking to our left, no traffic coming the opposite way. That'd be kind of freaky. And we're going to be flying the Nirvana. Approaching one runway 14 right. And that Nirvana Entered runway 14 right. That's enough of that. And left turn. One for right. That looks like our runway. All right. We're going to expect at least a 2360 on the RPM for power. We're watching those engine instruments. All right. Takeoff power is set. Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed is live. Looking for 55. Once we hit 55, we're going to rotate, pitch up for 10 degrees, and then hold VY 74 knots. 55, pitch up. Set that. Setting that velocity vector for 10 degrees. Hold that runway heading. I'm going to go ahead and activate. I'm going to activate. Uh, let's see here. Trim out. That's feeling pretty good. Look down. We're going to uh, see AP. We're going to do. Uh, ooh, heading mode. Whoa, Charles. Easy, easy, easy. Keep climbing. Keep climbing. I was losing it there for a second. Sorry, guys. I was too busy looking at my avionics. You don't want to do that. We're waiting to hear call departure. We haven't heard that yet. Okay, there's 700, direct nirvana. I'm going to hit nav mode. And there's not an IAS mode here, but there Number is. Number 6378 Mike, contact departure. Contact departure, 78 Mike. All right, autopilot is engaged. Now I'll go ahead and press COM1. Switch frequencies. Seattle departure, Skyhawk 6378 Mike, 1,040 feet, climbing via the SID. Service 6378 Mike, Seattle departure, greater contact, climb and maintain 4,000. Climb and maintain 4,000, 78 Mike. Alright, so we'll hit AP and we'll s turn this so it goes to 4,000. Woo! Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, let's. Class Delta in 0 0.8 miles. Okay, 4,000. I don't care about Class, class Delta. Class Delta in 1.3. You are killing me. All class right. Bravo above. Okay, we'll turn the tablet back on, and you can get as annoyed as I am hearing all these warnings. Okay. 700 feet. Okay, our next move is Nirvana, 9 miles. We're actually tracking Nirvana right now. We're in GPS navigation mode, FLC 78 knots. I'll go ahead. I mean, 78 knots is a decent climb rate. We're getting 1150. We're through 2000 now, climbing 4000. Number 6378 Mike, turn left heading 360. Turn left heading 360, 78 Mike. All right, so we'll go COM1, click stick like this, and I'm going to hit heading mode. 
and make sure it's a left turn. It is a left turn. We're turning. That's awesome. And I guess I'll have to kind of just dial in those last couple myself. Okay, so we're doing a climbing left turn. That's not a standard rate turn there, GPS. You can see you can see the rate of turn indicator is really, really like pegged out on the left. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm getting a little sick of these. November six three seven eight Mike, clear direct Womax. Clear direct Womax seven eight Mike. All right, so we'll go ahead and go to FMS one, and we'll just go down here. I'll press the direct two button. Enter, enter, and now we're clear direct Womax. We'll press nav mode. Oops, AP nav mode, and here we go. Left turn, direct Womax is showing right there. Seventeen point seven miles. We're climbing for four thousand. Let's make sure our climb out's good. Look over to the right here. Fuel flow is good. Pressure temperature are good. HT vax good. We have only half fuel. That's surprising. I must have been when I restarted my flight. Should have looked at that a little bit earlier. Everything else looks good though. Positive volts, positive amps in the battery. The airplane is healthy. Right now, the outside air temperature is nine degrees Celsius, so no no trouble with um, no trouble with icing. I don't think. Still still rolling out there at about 77 knots. A climb rate at 950 feet per Around minute. Around 6792 so contact loss. It's not me, that's that's him. I'm gonna go ahead alerts and I'm gonna say airspace alerts off for now. We're flying IFR. So okay, so we're about to hit four thousand. And as we hit four thousand, we're gonna go ahead and do our cruise checklist as we come in. We wanna do pitch power and trim. Alright, so we're pitching down and we're gonna set power to two thousand four hundred. That's gonna be our cruise RPM. Make sure we're trimmed out. AP is taking care of that. That's good news. And now we're going to go ahead and do uh, our leaning. So we're going to go ahead. And, uh, you can't do this. There's nothing here to do with the uh, the, the Octavi. So we're not doing anything with the Octavi. We're just doing the, the soft buttons on the GPS. So go ahead and bring that mixture back. We're watching the fuel flow. We want to see something around 8.6. And we will see EGTs climbing toward about 1,500. All right. Yeah, fuel flow about 8.5. That feels pretty good. Go ahead and hit back. All right. Let me go ahead and range out a little bit. There we go. We've got about a four-mile range ring now, so we know where we're going. And then if we look here at the tablet, which we got rolling here, let me go ahead and get back on our PFD. And if you look at our tablet here, we're headed toward. So the next thing we want to do is we want to get the weather at Bremerton, right? So we're going to hit COM2, we're going to switch, and we're going to listen. Now, you're not going to pick it up, I don't think, in Pilot Edge, but um, I'll read it out to you. I'm looking at it in text format right now. Uh, wind is 185 at 7. Visibility is 10. Ceiling 500 feet overcast. Temperature 12C. Roger, 78 Mike would like the ILS runway 20 into Bremerton. That'll uh, terminate uh, with a missed approach, and then we'll pick up uh, an RNAV coming the other way. Altimeter 3014. 185. 368 Mike, cross Wilmax 4000, cleared ILS runway 20. Approach report established localizer inbound. Cross Wilmax at 4000, cleared the ILS runway 20 into Bremerton, and uh, report established localizer inbound. 78 Mike. All right, we just got cleared for the approach, so that's awesome. Now, let's make sure we knew what we were doing here. So it's 185 at 7. Look at this chicken scratch. It's, it's absolutely awful. I want to take another look at, um, let's take another look at that weather. Because that's not what I expected. 186 at 6. Okay, let's try again. 186 at 6. Visibility 10. Sky conditions ceiling 500 feet overcast. Holy cow. Okay, 2.10. Altimeter 3014. 1414. Okay. Alright, Wumox is 11.2 nautical miles away, so that's that's fine. Uh, we have a minute here. I'll go ahead and get back on guard. Oops, no. Comp 2. 
back on guard, and then we're going to set COM1 standby to the CTAF 12305. 305. Okay, the CTAF is set. And uh, did, what did we hear? We heard 3014, so our barrow is correct. Let's go ahead and take a look at the plate and let's brief our approach. So we're going to cross Wumox at 4000. And uh, that means we're going to need to fly the procedure turn. I think I'm going to. Um, I think I'm going to actually clarify with Seattle departure. Seattle departure, Skyhawk six three seven eight. Mike, just wanted to clarify. We will be flying the procedure turn uh, on this approach. That is correct. Roger seven eight, Mike. All right, so cross Wumox 4000, we're going to go outbound. We're going to go outbound 017. So we're going to make a right turn, go 017. Then we're going to make a left turn, 332, spin around. We're flying this procedure turn that's going to get us back inbound. As we fly that procedure turn, we, uh, we can actually descend to 3000 as we fly the outbound procedure turn. Or when we're established, let's see. Wilmox 3500, we can actually start to descend 3000 as we go outbound. We can descend 3000 as we go outbound. Let me, let me undo a little bit of this. And okay, we're 7.5 from Wilmox outbound. We can do 3000 like that. Then we're going to do our procedure turn, 332. And once we're back ground, inbound, ground, Bonanza 136, Charlie Mike with India, taxi to, uh, one and one report North localized North via VFR, uh, northeast bound. All right, and so we're going to fly this green needles. We're going to fly green needles, and we're going to do that once we've crossed Wumox. I'll switch it. I'll switch it out for green needles. We'll go ahead and fly. Seven zero one three six Charlie Mike Junction Ground. That's Romeo actually not true. Taxi Alpha. I'll switch to green well, needles once we make the turn uh, inbound. Charlie Mike, any chance we can take Alpha Four on the procedure turn heading one five two. One three six Charlie Mike runway one one tax via Alpha Alpha Four. All right, Charlie Mike uh, one one Alpha Four. Let's see. Let's make sure we got everything else set up here. Let's make sure our plane is happy. Okay, RPM two thousand four hundred forty. Uh, fuel flow and oil pressure temperature are good. EGT is good. Vac is good. Fuel quantity is a little bit low, but we're going to be all right. Uh, ET three minutes, and I'm going to go ahead. We're about five miles out uh, from Wumox, so we're going to go ahead and bring our speed down. We're going to fly this approach at ninety knots. So bring that speed down to about two thousand one hundred RPM. That should bring our speed to ninety knots to fly the approach. Now I see here it says top of descent, but that's that's not true. Let me go ahead and hit FMS one flight plan. Okay, here we go. There's Wumox, and that shows the procedure turn. Okay, give it a little bit more gas here. We're slipping below 90 knots. We want to fly this at a nice tight 90 knots. Let's take a look at the uh, MFD. I'm going to go over here, and what we'll do is we'll switch this into flight plan mode. So FMS2 flight plan. Oh, that's nice. I like that. We'll, we'll click the stick so we have our, our little stick uh, item here. There we go. Yeah, now we, ha now we have a diagram. One, one alpha four, now we have a we have a, we have a diagram much. of the um, of the procedure turn. Now remember, we have to cross the box at four thousand. But once we one cross the box at three thousand, the plate shows us that we can go down to three thousand. So uh, this is not the top of descent yet. You see, we don't want to listen to that. That's wrong. We've been given specific instructions to stay at 4,000 until we cross Wumox. So we have 3.4 nautical miles to go. Once we cross Wumox, it's going to be a right turn. We're going to get on this outbound heading of 017. We're going to make a left turn, loop around, and we're going to intercept the localizer. Uh, Skyline 42105. So let's go ahead and make sure we hit proc, and we choose activate approach, enter. OK, the approach is active. And I just want to make sure that that's, that's correctly set the nav frequencies. You see right there, 111.1 IPWT, that's going to be our localizer frequency. And so when we get turned around on, let me go ahead and range out just a little bit. Once we turn all the way around, we'll be intercepting 
1907, the, the final approach course on the localizer coming back in for the uh, for the approach. Oh, we're going a little fast. Let's turn that back down. If you've already made a call with just your call sign and ATC responds, go ahead. Please don't just say request. Actually say your request. Otherwise, it's just waste of time. All right, 42105 would like to practice the uh, ILS-21 left into Prescott uh, with vectors and then go mist, come back to Cottonwood, okay, practice GPS. the so runway it's make 32 right approach. Turn. Or the it says 1716, so there we go. Back into Cottonwood, now that we've full crossed stop, it, we can hit AP and we can reduce level. this to 3000. Um, I'm going to hit VS mode and I'm going to go down Use the inner knob to set 600. Sorry. Now I'm going to set the RPMs down to about 1900. We want to keep that at 90 knots as we make that descent. Coming through, descending to 3,000 feet on the outbound course before we start the procedure turn. Okay, the magenta needles are lining up. We're coming onto the outbound course of Moomox right now. You can see that. 2562105. Feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. It's still a little Mike, fast. Early six Charlie Mike, frequency change approved. Six Charlie Mike. Centered on the needles. And I'm going to go ahead and hit here and click, and I'm going to set my heading bug. This is one thing the Octavi doesn't do that I wish it did. There is no way to sync okay. your heading bug, to center sure your going. heading bug with your current oh, magnetic sure. heading. One, number one, we'll release. It is, it is something that has been drilled into me by Perfect every instructor. Perfect 2489, release to departure. Please wait, it's not office in five minutes. 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 It's not um, IFR to Seattle. Let's go ahead and recheck the ground Unicom 12305. That's uh, what's in our so standby. Okay, we're uh, coming out at our 3,000 altitude. Not my radar. Verify the uh, transponder 2562. Uh, we're going to go ahead and push our RPMs up to 2,100. I'm going to go ahead and reach the mixture just a little bit because we're down now to 3,000. 2562105. There we go. Hold 90 knots. It's feeling pretty good. And we're going to about to do a left turn here. We do that left turn. It's going to be a left Sir, turn out to your radar contact, three five three miles two. east of Drake VOR Prescott altimeter three zero three five. Say aircraft type and equipment suffix. I am uh, one zero five is a Sky Hawk um, slant golf. So one zero five, Roger. Maintain appropriate feet for altitudes, and uh, you can. You can go ahead and make your turn back toward the airport. Just advise when you're joining the localizer for runway 21 left. All right. Advise on the localizer for Here comes that left, left turn. One, two, five. Coming out the proc turn, just like that. Nice and easy. I think that says 332. Charles, what did you write? You just scribbled right over it. Never move. Niner six seven niner two Seattle Center. And you said you're on the ground at Kelso. Uh, affirmative. Proctor at Kelso three, three, for, uh, three two. Seven, nine, two. There we go. And I'll go ahead, sink the heading bug. Click. There you go. And right now we're outbound. We stay at three thousand. Sorry, niner six seven niner two. Roger, stand by. When we're established on one nine or seven, we report and we can descend to two thousand five hundred across the final approach fix. Wumox on our way back in, we cross at two thousand five hundred and the we pick up the glide slope on green needles and come all the way in. So when we make this turn back onto the localizer like we do here, I'll go ahead and set CDI for uh, green needles uh, once we're established one nine or seven, and we'll do the uh, departure. Good afternoon, we'll one three six. We switch it to heading mode, then we'll switch the CDI, then we'll switch it back to nav mode. All right, here we go. 
making our move around. That's looking really good. While we're doing this turn, let's go ahead and do our before landing checks. We've got uh, tanks on both. Fuel shutoff is in. Mixture is a little bit lean. We're going to rich it out as we uh, descend below 2,000. Flaps are up. Go we're going to go flaps 10 at the final that's approach fix. Lights are set uh, for lights are set for uh, landing. landing. Master one standby are on, and Magnus are on both. Uh, we're going to be cruising at 13.5. Uh, aircraft on. I was a BE-36. Flank off. Uh, and um, seatbelts are fastened. Sorry, I was losing my train of thought. There's just so much talking going on today. 136, Charlie Mike, squawk 3035, right on. All right, 3035, right, right, coming, coming around. Go ahead and bring that RPM back down a little bit. We're still going a little fast. Continue that turn. So 136 Charlie Mike, your radar contact, 11 one miles northeast of Grand Junction Airport, Grand, uh, Junction Altimeter 3048. 4 for 6 Charlie Mike. Sir, 6 Charlie Mike, contact Denver Center 120.47. 2047, 6 Charlie Mike. Walker 2489, Salt Lake Center, I that. All right, see, we're coming in. Go ahead and range in so you can kind of see there. Look at that. And that inbound heading is going to be 19 or 7, and depending on how much crosswind we have, there's a 22 knot headwind. That's a hell of a, a hell of a thing up here. 136 Charlie Mike, Denver Center, thank you. All right, there we go. And we are established. So once we, once we settle this heading out, I'm going to go ahead and go heading sync like this, and I'm going to hit AP heading mode. Now we're on heading mode. I'm going to go ahead and hit... S I'm going to hit... Uh, Oh boy, how do we do this? Okay, FMS one. Is this is this right? This can't be right. CDI. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay, we had a localized. Let me go ahead and report. Seattle departure, Skyhawk number six three seven eight. Mike reporting inbound localizer on the runway two zero approach. Six three seven eight Mike, no traffic thirteen you and Bremerton report of cancellation is for a in the frequency on the ground one two two point two change advisory frequency approved. Change to advisory approved, we'll be back with you on the mist. Seven eight Mike. Alright. Walker twenty four eighty nine so not go ahead and the ADOT. Com one, switch to Unicom and then uh, how far are we out? We'll go ahead and go FMS one and we'll just dial and show that we are it looks like about ten. Uh, 11 from the field or so, it looks like. Let's verify that with our plate real quick. We're, you know, Wumox is, what, 6.3, and we're 5 from Wumox. Yeah, we're 11 to the north. So. Keep that at 90, and we can come down. That's right. AP, we go at 2,000, we go 2,500. Vertical speed mode. Down 600 feet a minute. Bring that RPM down to 1900, and we're going to go ahead and push mixture full rich as we're coming down below 2000. We're coming down below 3000. We'll go ahead and make a call now. Looks like we're 11 from the field. Remember to traffic sky hot number 6378. Mike is 11 north of the field on a straight in low approach runway 20, departing to the south, Bremerton. There you go. We don't need to say a whole lot about IFR. Nobody knows about that. Nobody cares about it. They just want to know that we're straight in and that we're going to be heading out in the same direction that we were coming that we were that we were shooting for okay coming down now 2500 is the target altitude coming down at 600 feet a minute Wumox our final approach fix is four miles away once we cross Wumox we're, or once we approach Wumox we're going to start to see this glide slope come alive just like that okay we're approaching 2500 rpms go back up to 2100 we want to hold that 90 knots All right, feeling pretty good there. 2,500 glide slope will come alive. When it does, we're going to watch it to come between this dot here and this line. Once it's between those two, we're going to go flaps 10. We're going to activate the approach mode on our autopilot. That'll create a couple. Of, that'll activate the coupled approach procedures, and that'll automatically begin to bring our airplane um, down to stay on the glide slope and maintain uh, lateral sync with the localizer and uh, we'll fly that all the way down. Now you heard that uh, clouds are about 500 feet above the the runway at this time and the elevation of the field here is uh, 
444. So if we add 500 to 444, right around 900, 940 feet or so, um, we should break out. That's about 300 feet above our minimum. So let's see how that goes. Um, I suppose it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and recheck the weather. So I'll go ahead and COM2 and we'll switch over to 121.2. Um, again, you can't you can't hear it because it's not being transmitted by Pilot Edge, but I can see a text and I'll tell you. Sky condition, ceiling 500 feet overcast. Yeah, hasn't changed. Wow. All right, we'll switch back to guard. All right, we're flying pretty close to 90 knots. We have two miles to go until the final approach fix. We're watching for glide slope to come alive. Looking good here. Remember that uh, I'm going to go ahead go ahead and clear all these annotations. Blech, there you go. All right, remember that our our minimums here are six four, uh, 642 feet MSL and one half statute miles visibility. Cool. Glide slope is coming alive. You can see that now. Uh, anybody want to take a look around? Want to see what we can see? Yeah. Not a whole lot. All right. Enjoyed that. All right. Okay, glide slope is coming at us here. We're flying a little fast. We're going to bring that approach speed back down to 90. All right. Three quarters of a mile for the final approach fix. Getting our speed arranged. Sink that heading bug. Most of the crosswind component now has, has fallen off here at about 2,500 feet. So as we come down, we expect the wind to, uh, to die off. The wind's only about six knots at the ground down here. All right, the diamond is just about where it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and hit flaps 10 degrees. Autopilot, activate approach mode. Glide slope has just been captured. Expect the nose to come down. Yep, the nose is following the uh, the capture the uh, the coupled approach. We're going to go ahead and bring the RPMs down to make sure that we maintain 90 knots on our way down. The localizer is captured, and the glide slope is captured. IPWT, that's the correct localizer. That's the Bremerton localizer. And we're now six miles. I'll make another call. I was not transmitting on the right frequency. Yikes. Remember to traffic, Skyhawk November 6378 Mike is uh, five and a half miles north of the field, straight in, runway 20, low approach, and will depart to the south, Bremerton. All right, and in we come. Now, because we're on the coupled approach, this heading, this altitude bug doesn't really make much sense. Why don't we use it for something else? So, AP mode, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 4,000 because that is our, that is our climb altitude for our missed approach. We'll climb to 4,000. So now, we're using the altitude bug for something useful. Speaking of bugs, sync the heading bug. And fuel flow, oil pressure, temperature, EGT vac are good. Still, still a good amount of fuel. We've got uh, about 22 gallons of fuel, so that's enough for about an hour and a half of flight. Okay, we're out of 1,800. We are descending to our minimums of 650 feet. Now, remember, on a three mile final runway two zero, on a precision approach, this is a decision altitude. This is not an MDA. We don't stay at 650 and keep flying. If we hit 650, we do not see the runway. We are going to go missed. Now, because we're simulating a mist, we're going to, we can decide. Either we can do a touch and go, and then go missed if we want to, or we can go ahead and just call it and be like, nope, we want to hit those minimums and we want to go. I think I want to go ahead and hit the minimums and, and just go. I want to do my cram, climb, clean, Click and calm. So I want to get those right, and I want to do them right at the at the decision altitude. Okay, does it sound pretty good? All right, we're coming down now. Uh, looks like uh, 800 feet to go. Let's go ahead and pop our head up and see what we see. Remember that uh, we 
we thought we would start to see something at about 940 feet MSL. We we're seeing it a lot earlier, 500 feet higher than we expected. We're right on glide slope, right on localizer. We can see the two reds and the two whites. We can see the approach, um, the rail. Uh, that's the approach lighting up the uh, uh, up in front of the runway. And then we can see, I can see the end lights. I can see um, the runway edge lighting. I don't think I can see any paint yet, but. Uh, but I can see plenty, and I can definitely see l far enough that we've established our uh, our minimums uh, for visibility. So, what are the three things that we need to be able to land? We need to uh, have our minimums uh, satisfied, which we have. Runway environment in sight, which we have. Five hundred. And in a continuous position to land, which we are. So we could land if we wanted to right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and not do that. We're going to continue down. We're going to go all the way down to our minimums of 650 feet. We have 250 feet to go. 500. We have 200 feet to go. We're a little fast. Bring that RPM down. We're a little fast. We're on a couple approach right now. I'm going to go manual. Now. And we're a little low. There's 650, those are the minimums. Going mist, cram, full power. Climb, pitch up, we're going to pitch for 10 degrees, then for 74, clean. We're going to go flaps up. We're going to fly that runway heading. We're climbing for 4,000, we know that because we bugged it. Good for us, we did a really good job there. Trying to get that trim set so that we don't slip. A nice, good climb here. We're looking for um, suspend, there it is. There's click. Bremerton traffic, Skyhawk 6378, Mike, departing to the south, Bremerton. All right. And I'm going to go ahead, CDI, and switch over to Purple Needles now. It's easier to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and activate IAS Climb Mode. And I'm going to activate Nav Mode here on AP. And I'm going to turn AP on. AP is on, FLC mode is engaged, climb is engaged, we'll go COM1, switch, and talk Archer, to departure. Archer, clearance avoid if not off in three minutes, if not off in three minutes, advise Seattle Center of intentions within one zero minutes, change of visor frequency approved. Uh, release for departure, if not off in three, contact Seattle Center in ten. Uh, all right, let's make sure that everything is good here, RPMs are good, fuel flow pressure is good, all that's good, let's call departure. Seattle Departure, Skyhawk number 6378, Mike, 2,280 feet on the published mist from Bremerton. 6378, Mike, Seattle Departure, IDEN. IDEN, 78, Mike. 78, Mike, radar contact 21 miles west of Seattle Airport, Seattle Altimeter 3014. 3014, 78 Mike. All right, we've got radar contact. We're back with departure. Now, at this point, they're going to ask us our intentions. Um, I don't need to do a, a, a complete hold. I don't care about that. What I've decided I'm going to do is we'll do, uh, we'll come back. I'm going to pick uh, RNAV runway 02 and we'll do a circling approach. We know that, that at 1500 we broke out of the clouds, and circling has us coming all the way down to 1160, and that's plenty. So we'll have 400 feet of clearance, and we can actually do a circling approach. So I'm going to ask for RNAV GPS runway 2, and we're going to circle runway 20 and land and call it for the day. We've been flying a long time, and uh, it's been a lot of fun, but uh, I, I want to make sure that we I don't get myself overtired here as we, uh, as we go. So as we're coming up, we're breaking out of the clouds. That's kind of nice. I expected that they wouldn't be too thick. There's no big precipitation today. There's a little bit of Bremerton, as you saw, but it's overall not terrible. There are easy stratus, no cumulus today, nothing bad, no thunderstorms, etc. cetera. So, so that's good. Um, so uh, we're going to be climbing 4,000, the intercept point. Uh, we'll go ahead and go back to the ILS look so you can see it. The intercept point is going to be on the R346 radial. Why don't we uh, play around with that a little bit? So I'll hit NAV2 and I'll dial the Ohm uh, 113.4 like that. And there's OLM. And I'll go ahead and do. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. PFD options, I'll do bearing 2. 
Yeah, there's OLM. All right, we're at 4,000 feet. We're going to bring that RPM down now. There you go, number 2,400, pitch power and trend. Okay, we're pitching down. We're powered for 2,400. That's going to be our... Actually, we're going to slow it. We're going to slow it down because we, we're flying a mist. We're going to be flying that hold. There's no need to be going super fast right now. And everybody coming down again and not too terribly long. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep the RPMs where they are. I'm also not going to lean the engine because we're coming right back down again. 105 heading 230 to join the localizer. ILS runway 21 left practice approaches approved. Maintain VFR at so all times. No Watch separation this. services provided. Actually, you know what? All right, 105 I'm is not three going to change to green needles. I'm not going to change to green VFR needles. The reason I was told approach approved. to not change to green needles in the middle of the mist is because the, the mist approach the heading to join is 230230 from the green needles waypoints and uh, by as much as a mile so you don't want to be you don't want to be switching in the middle and then getting the wrong waypoint it's it's perfectly all allowed within terps but it'll it'll hang you up if you think you want to so stay on the magenta needles and if you're going to have a DPE you're flying with ask them beforehand if, you, if they're okay with the plan. You're like, when I go missed, I'm going to fly down the ILS on green needles. When I go missed, I will go on the jet needles and stay on the jet needles. Okay miles east of the story of the OR, Portland, Delta, Meter, 3019. Okay, we're doing good. 92 knots. We're at the intercept point. It's going to take a left here. We're going to head for the Alpha Yankee, um, make a left. Uh, join Alpha. All right, so let's uh, see what we actually want. If you want need to here. cross the intersecting runway there. We're headed to Cairo, right? We're headed to Cairo. Uh, you mean make a right at Alpha to parking? So here's Cairo. Sir, three Alpha Yankee. Yeah, sorry. Join Alpha and then a left here. And then I'll fire to up the, the procedure. Approaching to KPWT is going to be okay. to the ramp. zero starting at yeah, Zulchin. Alpha, advise if I cross yeah, right at this. Eight. We go to Cairo and then we can so hit Zulchin straight Yankee, up. You need, you need a specific crossing instruction. Just advise if you if you need to. If, if you're if you're going to be parking west of the runway, you shouldn't have to worry about it. Yes, I'll be parking to the west. I won't be crossing. Seven three three Alpha Yankee. Right. Seattle departure Skyhawk seven eight Mike approach request. For one zero five Raider services are terminated. Squawk VFR and contact uh, Prescott Tower. Okay, we're to Prescott Tower, Squawk VFR, 105. Thanks for your help. Your 78 Mike, go ahead. Uh, 78 Mike would like the RNF GPS runway 2 into Bremerton. Uh, we will terminate by circling runway 20 and full stop. All right, 78 Mike, you want to fly the approach from Zolgi? Affirmative. We'd like the approach from Zolgi, please. There's 6378 Mike, you're clear, direct Zolgi, cross Zolgi at 4000, cleared on now for only two approach, report inbound from Zolgi. Clear direct Zolgi, cross Zolgi at 4000, cleared the RNAV GPS runway 2 into Bremerton, report when inbound Zolgi, 78 Mike. Alright, lots going on there, we're going to hit uh, FMS1, rock, select approach, like this, enter, no, that's not, uh oh, autopilot, off. Autopilot off. Heading. Heading mode. AP. Heading mode. AP on. That was dumb, and let's fix that up. So, FMS one. Proc. Select approach. Enter. RNAV zero two. Starting at Zogi. Enter. Activate. L. Proc. Activate approach. Sir, 42105, uh, Prescott AP, Tower. If you're mode. VFR, you want to be sure you say practice. Um, runway Proc 21 left, clear to land, wind 320 right. at and 3. Direct Zolgi. There you go. We're flying direct Zolgi now, keeping that 90 knots. 42105, I'd like to go missed with vectors, then back to 
Cottonwood for an approach there. Full stop at Cottonwood. Okay. Now that that's all fixed up, I'm going to go ahead and hit. 42105, uh, Roger. Uh, low approach is approved. Clear. And. I'm Correction, runway 21 left clear, let's low go ahead approach, and, set our and uh, you're approved to join the missed approach procedure. We're circling, so it's 1160. Okay, cleared, uh, low approach, 21 left, um, 105. I hate setting it via this timer page. It, it like, backs itself up. 1160. There we go. All right, minimums are set now. Enter, clear. Okay, good. All right, well, uh, let's make sure that everything else is set up here. We're flying a 2200, and let's uh, let's get the latest weather at Bremerton. We're going to know what we're, we're dealing with here, so we're going to go uh, COM2 switch, and I know you're not hearing anything, but it's over here. Went 205 at 6. Go ahead. Really? What the hell? Ugh. Ugh. Why is this being so difficult with me today? Uh, 205 at 6, altimeter 3015. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead, we're going to listen one more time for the weather, or I'm going to watch one more time for the weather. Zolgi now 3.5 nautical miles. Let's, um, let's go ahead and switch our gears for just a second here and make sure that we know what's going on. So here's the MFD, FMS2. We'll go ahead. Zolgi's initial approach fix. This is going to be a hold in lieu of a procedure turn. It is suggesting that we do uh, a teardrop entry. So we're going to make a slight left as we cross Zolgi. Then it's going to be a right turn around to, uh, right, to hit yeah, Zolgi right. inbound. And then cross right, again. Yeah, exactly. So let's look at the plate here. Approach RNAV 02. So Zolgi, once we cross Zolgi at 4,000 on the way in, we can then descend, we can then descend down to 2,100 we, we also want to um, report when we're inbound Zolgi. Okay, Zolgi's down 2.2 nautical miles. We're going to expect uh, our GPS uh, uh, autopilot is going to be handling the procedure turn for us, and we do not get to descend down below 4,000 until we cross Zolgi coming back in. Okay? So that's it. That is the initial approach fix on our way back in. Final approach fix, CBOD, is 9.3 miles from Zolgi. And at that point, once we cross final approach fix, we'll go flaps 10. Let's finish out the rest of what we were doing together. We were getting the weather at Bremerton again, just to be sure that we are absolutely on, on point with the weather. 1, 9 or 1 at 6. This weather just keeps changing. One, I mean, it's not that much. 9 or 1 at 6. Visibility 10. Sky condition, ceiling 500 feet overcast, again, 005. Temperature 12C, 12C, altimeter 3013. Okay, that's Bremerton uh, weather. Um, I guess you weren't seeing me right on my tablet, but that's not very exciting anyway. All right, we'll set COM2 for... Um, COM2, switch back to guard. COM1, we're staying on departure. And uh, plugged in is 123.05, which is the Unicom from Bremerton. So our comms are set up correctly. So we're set there. We're just about to start our, it should be a left turn. Left turn. Boys, the clearance challenger, five Delta Bravo AFR clearance to Tri Cities. Well, it's going to be the teardrop entry to the hold and loop and procedure turn to get us back inbound onto Zolgi for the approach. <sighs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn these PFD options off. I don't like these right now. They're not doing anything for me. There's 748, when I will proceed direct Salinas. There's Salinas, 748. There we go. We'll turn those off. Those don't matter right now. And make sure that IPWT, uh, oh, I see. You see NAV1 and NAV2 are IPWT right now. Those aren't going to help us. We're not using a uh, glide slope. We could dial some other stuff if we thought it would be useful, I suppose. I guess we could dial Olympia for Afternoon, instance. Boy, the clearance Nav challenger to five to the Bravo AFR to Tri Cities. Well, M. There five. Is that five Delta Bravo or five Victor Bravo? There's Nav two. Five Delta Bravo. Bravo. There you go. There are five Delta Bravo Boise clearance clear to Tri Cities Airport Boise three departure to Ola. Direct Baker City. Direct Pasco. Direct 
All right, let's go ahead and do our uh, before landing checks here. Fuel tanks for both, full shut off is in, mixture is full rich, flaps are up, we're going 10, final approach fix. We've got lights as required for landing, master is on, standby is on, keys are in. We have, uh, looks to me like about 20 gallons of fuel left, so we've got plenty to land. We have 28 volts in the battery, amps are good, fuel flow pressure, temperature, ET or VAC are good. Plane is happy and healthy, seat belts are fastened, ready for landing. And we're flying 96 knots. We're going a little fast here. We're making that right turn to come back on the inbound of 053. Crosses Olgi the other way. Then we can descend 2,500. I'll go ahead and go ahead and pre-bug for 2,500. Uh, is that right? No, 2,100. Way down there. There you go. 2,100 is set. RNAV GPS runway 2. Yep. Once we cross Zolgi, we can come out of 2100, cross C bod at 2100. C bod is the final approach fix. Okay, really nice speed control right now. Looking at 90 knots uh, indicated. That's still real healthy. Very happy with that. All right, let's just go ahead and go straight up plate here. And uh, let's talk about real quick what we're going to do once we come inbound because this is a circling approach, right? So once we come inbound, 2100 C bod, that's the final approach fix right there. We're going to come down one nautical mile from the runway. We're going to deflect right and we're going to enter left traffic. Boom, 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 like that and land runway 20. Okay? That's how it's going to work. Um, that's a circling approach. We're going to keep it really tight. We want to keep that within like 0 0.5 nautical miles. You want to be about a half mile from the runway. Kind of keep it real tight in. Not as uh, not as uh, not as regimented a pattern as you would uh, in a regular approach. Circling, you want to keep it really tight. Don't lose sight of the airfield. It'll be off our left, so it'll be really easy to see as a pilot, and that'll be uh, fantastic. All right, I'll go ahead and report it now. Saddle departure number six, uh, six three seven eight. Mike reporting inbound. Zolgi. Six three seven eight. Mike, thank you. No chopper zero two nine for ten. Report over cancellation. Miss bridge chopper in this frequency on the ground one two two point two. Change advisor frequency approved. Change to advisor frequency approved. We'll be back with you on the ground. Thanks for the help. Seven eight, Mike. All right, com one switch, and we want to do AP. VS mode minus 600 because we got to come down to 2100 now that we're past Zolgi. We'll bring that throttle back. 1900 RPM. Let's go ahead and try to keep that 90 knots as we come on down. We have eight miles to go to C bud. Make sure COM1 is switched over. We got 12305. Oh that's our uh, that's our CTAF frequency. FMS uh, one will hit flight plan. Turn that on. We're 7.3 and another five to the runway missed approach point. So we're 12 south of the field. So we'll tell them what we're doing. Permanent traffic, Skyhawk number six three seven eight. Mike is 12 south of the field. Going to be entering uh, left downwind runway two zero. Full stop, Bremerton. There you go. Look at that. And since I'm not going to be able to contact, uh, I'll keep departure where they are just in case we have to go missed for any reason. Now it does show GPS LPV and that's really wonderful and everything. And yes, we have LPV level of precision, but it doesn't make a bit of difference because we're flying a uh, circling approach. So even though LPV minimums are 772, it doesn't matter. Our minimums are 1,160 feet MSL and one statute mile of visibility. I've got it set to 1160 right here in the Barrow Mints um, and it's an MDA for circling. It's not a decision, altitu uh, decision altitude. So once we hit that circling minimums, we're going to be looking for the runway. We're going to be making sure that we have visual one mile away from the runway. So one, when, when we're one mile from runway 02, we'll make that right deflection about 30 degrees off. We're going to enter left downwind for runway 20. We're circling around the airfield and then we'll come in for a landing. So we're going to be doing some visual work. 
as well. Once it happens, I'll turn the tablet off so that you can, so that you can kind of, uh, you know, just fly visual with me here. But should be, should be not too terrible, right? We came in the other way, and we saw that when we hit about 1500 MSL, we could start to see some stuff. So our minimums are 1160, so 300 feet or so before that, um, we should break out. And we should have some good. Um, uh, some some good wiggle room uh, above us in the clouds. I apologize. My words are getting away with me today. <sighs> okay, three miles from the final approach fix. Uh, our speeds are looking good. We're about, we've got 400 feet to go. Um, we're making about a mile and a half a minute. We've got two minutes to get there, so 600 foot fit, feet per minute, we're totally fine. We can be doing 300 feet per minute and still be fine. Um, 2100, we're going to cross the seed bot at 2100. When we hit that final approach fix, we'll go ahead and flaps 10. Um, we can use LPB, but you know what? I'm not going to. Or excuse me, we could use vertical guidance, but I'm not going to. If you look here, the glide path is three um, is three degrees. If you go to documents here and you go to the uh, terminal procedure supplement, you can actually look and you can see the angle of three degrees right here at a speed of 90 corresponds to 480 feet per minute down. So what we could do is we can, oops, we're at uh, 2100 there. Sorry, let me turn up uh, my speed to 2100 in the RPM, fly the profile. I was too busy talking and I lost my train of thought. So we can fly at about uh, 500 feet a minute descent rate and we'll probably stay on that three degree, that three degree glide slope as long as we keep our speed at 90 knots. Um, and ground speed's about 103, so we should be a little more aggressive than that. Let's try five. Let's try 500 and see how it goes. Let's see how close we stay to that diamond as we come down. You want to see what things look like out there? Yeah, we're, we're going to be able to see the runway. That's good. We can't see it yet, but we will. Okay, 0.3 nautical miles to the final approach fix. Okay, we're across the final approach fix. Flaps down. We're going to go ahead and hit APVS minus VS minus. Okay, I don't know why it's doing that. Stop it. That's weak. All right, fine. I'll use my backup controller. VS minus 600. Uh, wow, the autopilot is failing. All right. I don't care. I'll fly it manually. Two and a half degree down angle. Keep a heading of uh, zero six zero. The autopilot just kept doing a. The autopilot. The autopilot just kept going into Alt S mode and trying to hold an altitude, and I don't want it to. Oh, I see why. I understand why because I didn't set the altitude bug correctly. All right, well, I'll set it to 1,200. Oops, we are absolutely off the track. Going to go left. Let's go nice and easy. Let's go nice and easy. And we're three miles. Permanent traffic, Skyhawk number 6378 Mike is three miles south of the field. Going to be entering left downwind runway 20 full stop Bremerton. All right. And back to the right a little bit. Let's turn that AP back on. It's going to be GPS. Two mile mode. final yes, runway now. zero 02. Okay, we're a two mile final. We have another 300 feet to lose. Remember, at one mile from the runway, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to poke our head. At one mile from the runway, we're going to start our deflection. We should be at 1200. That's going to be the closest my altimeter is, or uh, Alt S is going to get. Okay, we're going to bring our RPMs back up now and hold that 1200. That's a pretty good amount of wiggle room. Okay, there it is. That looks really good. And it's 1.2 nautical miles. 1.1 nautical miles. Okay, we're looking around. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Let me turn the tablet off so we can just fly this. All right, autopilot off. I'll go ahead and fly manually. And I'm going to go ahead and use range down to 0 0.5. 
uh, flight plant mode. I should just be looking here. I should not be using my MFD. Okay, we're doing pretty well on... All right. There you go. Permanent traffic, Skyhawk number 637. Mike's on the left downwind, runway 20, full stop Bremerton. There you go. Okay, keep your eyes on that. Okay, 1160, I'm holding those, I'm holding those minimums. A little more power. And let's go ahead and set our heading bug to 20. That's gonna be useful for us. Okay, still have the runway in sight, still have the runway in sight, looking for traffic, looking for traffic. Nobody around, we've already done our pre-landing checklist, let's try to keep those minimums until we are, we have decided we are in a position to land. Are we in a position to land, yes or no? Yep, I feel like we're in a safe position to land, so I'm going to go ahead and start coming down, and I'm going to turn a uh, base to final nice and easy. We're not going to go out as far as we normally would, I'm going to go ahead and bring the power down, flaps 20 push the nose through. We're going to start coming down. want to keep that runway in sight. Keep that runway in sight the whole way. Bremerton traffic. Skyhawk number 6378. Mike's turning left base to final. Runway 20 full stop Bremerton. All right, there we go. Turn left. I'm just keeping that keeping that in sight the whole time. Keeping that, in, keeping that runway in sight the whole time. I'm going to go flaps 30. It's an abbreviated pattern, right? You're not doing the full base. You're not doing the whole, the whole shtick with, you know, the big box and the 45 and the right, sh the left shoulder and the this and the that and all that. You're keeping the runway in sight so you don't lose it in the clouds and you are getting down to the ground. That is what you are doing on a circling approach. All right, we're coming in 62 knots, looking pretty good. Flaps 30, we're high. Got four whites, no reds but there's plenty of room. We know we don't need all that room. We are doing a good job. We're losing a little bit of altitude. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and bring that nose up. Try not to sink any lower. There you go. That's looking really good. Plane's responding very well. Go ahead, go full idle. We cleared all the obstacles. We'll put it down a little past the 1,000 footers, but not too bad. And nose up and hold that nose off. There you go. Hold that nose off. Let it sink. Very nice. All right, flaps up. One, two, three. A4 is going to be our next turnoff. We're going to be able to hit that no problem. We're going 30 knots. We'll go ahead and put the brakes on. Not bad. We'll be able to make A4 no problem. All right. Bremerton traffic, Sky Hawk number 637. Mike, clear runway 20, taxi fueling, Bremerton. All right, let's do our uh, after landing checklist. We're going to set our takeoff trim where it needs to be. That's good. We're going to go mixture a little bit lean for the field here. We're going to turn the landing and the strobe lights off. We're going to go ahead and uh, squawk IFR, or VFR. And I'll go ahead and tune COM1122.2. S16 left. 702, after Olympia VOR, flat heading 030, vector I left runway 16 left approach. Uh, fly heading 030 after Olympia VOR, uh, expect ILS 16 left approach 792. Sail departure, Skyhawk, or 6378. Mike on the ground at Bremerton. Like to cancel our IFR. 6378, Mike. I for cancellation received. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Good day, 78 Mike. I'll just pull up and get some fuel here and call it good. Sir, 8748, contact NorCal approach 120.905. 20905, now for it. Right, that's feeling pretty good. Let's go ahead and turn off our avionics and turn off the rest of our stuff and turn off our pedo heat. We'll go ahead and pull that back and blah, 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 blah. I 
that was fun. I enjoyed that very much. How about you? So my verdict is this thing is pretty good. I like it. I think it. I think it works pretty well. I got myself a little wrapped around the axle on a couple of these 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 little you know multi multi click fidgety bits. But you know overall, I thought it was pretty good. And and um, boy, it sure saves me having to click a whole bunch of stuff and, um, and spin those radio dials, which is like my least favorite part. So you know this thing weighs maybe a couple of sticks of gum worth, and it's it's great. It. Uh, um, I I, uh, I think with the exception of not being able to set the heading bug, which I would love to be able to sync the heading bug, um, and maybe a little bit of weirdness with the the clickers and not being able to know if you're in the click mode or not, um, you know it's it's well worth it. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I felt like it uh, was able to take a little bit of workload off me, and I really enjoy that. So thanks so much for joining today, and hope you enjoyed uh, flying with me IFR and trying out the Octavi one, uh, the Octavi IFR one. And uh, we'll see you for the next one as we continue to study up for the uh, instrument rating check ride that is coming up sometime in my future. Good to see you, everybody. Take care.